Trump administration needs to make sure that it has a clear and integrated approach towards Southeast Asia. I think there's been some elements of high levels of engagement, but I think the region is still looking for a clear sense of what the Trump administration's priorities are. And so when I'm talking about a clear and integrated picture, I mean that the Trump administration needs to make sure it has a balance between a security approach for the region, but also making sure that it has an economic and people-to-people -people aspect as well, and that that remains funded. I think there are some concerns that the economic and people-to-people -people aspects of it haven't been built out. I think there's also concern in the region about the fact that as the Trump administration pursues strategic competition with China, that Southeast Asia is being viewed through the prism of that competition rather than for its own merit. And I think the other aspect of a clear and integrated strategy is making sure that the Trump administration, there's a lot of confusion about what's going on domestically in the Trump administration. And the administration needs to make sure that that confusion doesn't confuse its Southeast Asia policy and how regional publics perceive what's going on. I think um, the traditional components have included uh, counterterrorism and maritime security, uh, humanitarian assistance, disaster relief. So the issue areas are well built up. I think what the United States needs to pay attention to is as it engages countries bilaterally and also looks to engage other major powers, it needs to make sure that it's also engaging ASEAN as a block because ASEAN has a number of regional mechanisms in terms of security that the United States can play a greater role in. And then also beyond ASEAN, there's a lot of uh, sort of intra-regional and sub-regional groupings uh, that ASEAN and ASEAN states are pursuing. And the United States has tremendous opportunities there too with respect to the Sulu Sea on, on the security side and then with respect to the Mekong region as well, where there's a lot of economic but also security initiatives that are going on. So I think there are tremendous opportunities for the United States to pursue it, but it needs to make sure that it remains open to a full range of those options rather than restricting itself to just bilateral or great power.